Example 11. Find the range of values of m for which the line y equals to mx plus 1 intersects the curve y square minus 3x square equals to 4 at 2 distinct points. Now first of all, what we need to know is we need to know how uh, do we find intersection points. But simple, isn't it? I mean, we should know that, that in order to find intersection points of two any two graphs, all we have to do is to solve for the simultaneous equation, right? So here we are, we have two si equations here, okay? One of a straight line and the other one of an ellipse. Uh, but seriously, we don't really have to bother ourselves with how the curve or how the line looks like. Okay, what we are more interested in is the range of values of m. And we are not even interested in finding the intersection points. I mean, we are not interested in the x values or the y values. And in fact, you may realize that we can't possibly find x and the y values because the three unknowns but only two equations. Okay, but what we are more interested in is in fact not the intersection points. What we are more interested in is the range of values of m. And how are we going to do that? Well, bec we know something else. We know that there will be two distinct intersection points. And when this is known to us, we know that the two distinct intersection points, what it means is that when we solve for this pair of simultaneous equation, we will get two x values and two y values. Okay, because there should be two coordinates, two sets of coordinates for the intersection points. So, what are we going to do? Well, we'll call this equation 1 and this equation 2. So what we're going to do, we're going to substitute in equation 1 into equation 2. So we're going to substitute in equation 1 into equation 2. And of course, this is what we get. We get mx plus 1 square minus 3x square is equal to 4. Alright, so of course what we do next is of course we were to just expand this to mx plus 1 minus 3x squared. We shall bring the 4 over, so it becomes minus 4 here. And we get a 0 at the right hand side. Now, I will do some rearrangement. So we get m squared minus 3x squared. Okay, plus 2mx minus 3 we equal to 0. What we have here will be an equation. Okay, now this is a quadratic equation. And there's one thing we know about this quadratic equation. And that is that this quadratic equation will have two solutions. How do we know that? Well, because we know that there are two distinct intersection points. When there are two distinct intersection points, it means that there are two sets of coordinates, and therefore there should be two values for x and two values for y. You no notice that we are not interested in the values of x and the values of y, but we are interested in the fact that there are two values for x and two values for y. Okay, And that two values for x, in this case here, translates to become that our b squared minus 4ac, our discriminant, will have to be positive in order to give us two solutions, two roots for x. So for this quadratic equation, our b squared will be 4m squared because there will be our 2m squared. Okay, that will give us 4m squared. Minus 4a, which is m squared minus 3, and of course our c must be greater than 0. Okay, now we need a little bit more space here. Okay, there we go. Alright, so expansion wise, okay, all we have to do is just to expand it. Okay, we will have positive 12m squared and minus 36 will be greater than 0. Okay, um, minus 12 here, so multiply by uh, 3, that give me a 36. Okay, so we end up here having a 16m squared minus 36 will be greater than 0. Alright, so let us proceed on. We'll divide throughout by 4. Okay, so they give me an answer of um, 4m squared minus 9 
will be greater than zero. So of course, what we do here, we should know what to do. I mean, we've been doing this for so many times. We factorize, isn't it? Okay, so we factorize, and this will be the answer that we get. Okay, so let me um, scroll it down further a little bit. We think we need more space for this. So we know that this curve will intersect at negative three over two, as well as positive three over two. And we want the parts that are positive, and therefore we want the positive parts. So our m will be negative less than negative three over two, or our m must be greater than positive three over two. So this will be our answer. Now what this answer tells us is that if our m were to be less than minus three over two or more than positive 3 over 2, our discriminant of this quadratic equation will be positive, will be greater than 0, and that means to say we'll have two solutions for x. Okay, and these two solutions for x will then translate to become the fact that there will be two intersection points. Okay, so I hope you see how all this links up. Alright, now before we end this example, there is this little thing that many students tend to um, do it wrongly. Okay, and that will be here. Okay, now this step on. I have seen many, many students doing this. Okay, they will say, ah, great, I got this, so I know what to do. I'll simply bring the minus 9 over, so I have 4m squared greater than 9. Well, I mean, isn't this wrong? I mean, isn't this correct? There's nothing wrong with this, isn't it? So what they went on to do would be m squared would be greater than 9 over 4. Okay, and then they think about it, they go, this is easy. You know, it's just simply square root both sides. Then I'll have plus minus 3 over 2. Okay, and therefore, well, you can say that m must be greater than 3 over 2, or m must be greater than negative 3 over 2. Now, as you can see here, okay, one of the answers is correct. That would be this one. Okay, but the other one is wrong. And in fact, of course, when you do this, you don't expect to get the full marks for that question. Okay, so why is this wrong? All right, first of all, it doesn't really make sense because for your m to be greater than 3 over 2, your m will have to be greater than negative 3 over 2, right? So it is uh, overlap, okay? So, uh, in fact, you simply have to have one inequality will do, okay? But obviously, this something wrong with this, okay? There, there's something seriously wrong with this. So always, always bear in mind, okay, that whenever you are doing quadratic inequality, even though a simple one like this, you still factorize okay now this is very very important you always factorize and after you factorize you draw you sketch the graph and then you determine the region that you want okay so no no the ones in red are all wrong okay